Millions of people take flights across the globe each and every day. Maybe even you are a frequent flyer yourself. Airplanes have been cleverly designed to mimic normal conditions on the surface of the Earth as accurately as they can. But they're not perfect. Have you ever wondered exactly what happens to your body when you fly? Make sure you watch to the end to learn about why flying can be like getting an x-ray. If this is your first time visiting our channel, please give this video a big thumbs up and hit that subscribe button for more cool videos. Today we're showing you what happens to your body on an airplane. Your senses are dulled. If you think that airplane food tastes bland and unappetizing, you're not the only one. And the airlines aren't exactly the ones to blame for this either. In fact, it's really all down to your own biology. Did you know that your senses of taste and smell are dulled significantly once you reach cruising altitude? Your ability to taste saltiness and sweetness can diminish by as much as 30% when you're up in the air. There are a number of factors playing into this phenomenon. First, the extremely dry cabin can evaporate the mucus in your nasal cavities, decreasing your olfactory perception. Your ability to taste is linked to smell, with some scientists suggesting that 80% of what you taste comes from your sense of smell. To make matters worse, the pressurization of the cabin also desensitizes your taste buds. Interestingly enough, even the low murmur of a humming engine generates a distracting white noise that has been demonstrated to impact your ability to taste. These three factors combine mercilessly to rob you of your sense of taste, leaving a great challenge for airline catering services when providing you with your in-flight meal. There is a bright side, though. Bitter, sour, and umami, also known as savory flavors, aren't as affected by these factors, so you can always opt for the classic tomato juice if you want to enjoy a potent flavor. You become dehydrated. That dry cabin air does more than just affect your ability to smell. At 30,000 feet in the air, cabin humidity levels reach a meager 12%, which also happens to be drier than a desert. This leaves your body extremely dehydrated, and this dehydration presents itself in many ways beyond just feeling thirsty. Your body is comfortable dealing with air at approximately 50% humidity. When the cabin air is almost five times as dry as that threshold, the effects of dehydration act rapidly and without clemency. You will very quickly feel thirsty, which presents a dilemma if you're as uncomfortable using an airplane lavatory as we are. Either hydrate often and face the bathroom frequently, potentially disturbing your aisle seat neighbor, or risk the effects of dehydration. Your eyes will dry up, your skin will feel reptilian, and the mucus protecting your sinuses, nostrils, and throat will evaporate leading you more prone to infection. This lack of hydration can give you a headache, make you dizzy, and even increase your heart rate or lower your blood pressure in extreme instances. Make sure you have plenty of lotion and don't be shy to drink water, even if it means frequent bathroom breaks. The consequences of dehydration simply aren't worth it. Avoid alcohol, coffee, and tea while you're at it, which possess diuretic properties and can leave you even more dehydrated. You're more likely to get sick. Like we mentioned earlier, evaporated mucus in your throat and sinuses can leave you more vulnerable to falling ill. But that's not the only reason why you're more likely to get sick while on an airplane. Imagine it now, 300 people crammed in a metal can in the sky for several hours. Sure, the air is recycled fairly well, but all it takes is a few people coughing or sneezing around you before the whole cabin has a cold. It comes as no surprise then that research suggests you're 100 times more likely to catch a cold while on an airplane than on any given day on the ground. The viruses responsible for causing colds and respiratory infections also happen to thrive very well in dry conditions, meaning you're significantly more vulnerable to airborne sickness. Even a small number of cases have popped up in which people caught severe illnesses, such as tuberculosis, from being cooped up in the cabin of an airplane. We haven't even told you yet about the cleanliness of your seat and tray table, and even the water you drink to keep you hydrated. Unfriendly bacteria such as E. coli and golden staph have been known to live on your seat's upholstery and your tray table for as long as a week. And if you think airplane cleanings happen frequently enough to avoid that, you'd be wrong. Even the sides of the drinking water tank have been found to contain traces of E. coli. Your brain gets confused. There are a number of reasons your brain starts to get confused on a flight. Perhaps the most well-known example is jet lag. Jet lag can affect your physical response to the world because of your cortisol levels. Your normal circadian rhythm goes with the light-dark cycle of night and day. Your body produces cortisol, the stress hormone, at specific times of the day, leading you to feel tired when they're low or more alert when they're high. Jumping several time zones can really affect this high-low process. And if you need to be alert and you have low cortisol levels, your entire body 
suffers for it. You feel tired, your heart rate isn't regulated properly, and your brain doesn't know what time it is because it's still stuck in your origin time zone. In addition to this jet lag, the whole process of moving without it being visually obvious that you're moving really confuses your brain. Your inner ear is responsible for your sense of balance. It can also detect emotion. When your ears are telling your brain that you're moving, but your eyes tell it that you're stationary, you can suffer from motion sickness. These two conflicting senses can make for an extremely uncomfortable flight, especially if you're particularly sensitive to the side effects of motion sickness you get a headache. Your poor head can't catch a break on the plane. In addition to confusion about the time of day and whether or not you're moving, you are also at a higher risk of suffering from an airplane headache. This type of headache is rather strange, given that it usually doesn't last for very long. It mostly affects men, and its onset usually occurs during landing. Researchers suggest that this headache comes on due to a discrepancy between the pressure of the airplane cabin and the pressure of the frontal sinuses. For some people, this difference occurs likely because some bodies have trouble equalizing the pressure increase that transpires when landing. Even if you're not a victim of this landing headache, you might still be at risk of developing a headache mid-flight. If you aren't hydrating properly during your flight, you risk acquiring a dehydration headache. Water is necessary to balance the functions in the body. If your body doesn't have enough of it, the brain can contract due to lack of fluid. When this happens, your shrunken brain ends up pulling away from the skull, causing the unpleasant pressure that most people know to be a headache. Interestingly, this is also probably why people experience head pain when they wake up after a night out drinking. Don't forget to stay hydrated. Your ears pop and your teeth hurt. We're willing to bet that you already know about popping ears on planes. You've probably experienced it yourself, but do you know why it happens? If you guess that it has to do with cabin pressure, you'd be correct. Cabin pressure affects a wide array of bodily functions, if you haven't noticed. As you take off from the runway, the air pressure in the cabin decreases. If you remember your high school chemistry, there is a law called Boyle's Law that states that gas pressure and volume are inversely related, meaning that as one goes up, the other goes down. Thus, as the pressure in the cabin goes down, the air in your middle ear expands. The popping feeling is just what happens when the pressure in your ear equalizes with that of the cabin. But did you know Boyle's Law can also affect your teeth? Yes, if you happen to have fillings or a cavity, the air in these tiny pockets in your teeth can also increase in volume, otherwise known as expansion, leading to the unquestionably uncomfortable feeling of an airplane toothache. Perhaps the worst part of this ache is that unlike ear popping, there is little you can do to relieve the discomfort. Everyone knows to chew gum to speed up the pressure equalization process in the ears, but your only real option for a toothache is a topical or oral painkiller. You experience bloating. Boyle's Law strikes again. If you've ever fallen victim to airplane bloating, then you know where we're going with this. Yes, this bloating is due to the lower air pressure in the cabin. While you're at cruising altitude, the gases in your body can expand as much as 25%. Talk about gassy discomfort. This unfortunate side effect of low pressure also happens to affect the gas in your intestines. Unfortunately, this can lead to the unbearable urge to break wind, something we imagine you're not too comfortable doing when confined in a metal tube in the sky with 300 other passengers. It's really not good for the body to hold in intestinal gas, however, so it's best to find a way to pass it peacefully without disturbing your neighbors. If you've been good about hydration, we're sure you'll be visiting the lavatory anyway. In the end, everyone is doing it, and it's for your own good. It's probably also best to avoid foods that can make you gassy before and during your flight. This gas volume increase can also affect more than just your gut. You have gas dissolved in the synovial fluid in your joints. The fluid can thicken and the gas can expand, putting more pressure on your joints and causing more discomfort, especially for sufferers of arthritis and other inflammatory joint pains. Your legs and feet pool with blood. We all know that it's not fun sitting in a cramped airplane seat for hours on end, but did you know that it's also potentially dangerous? Especially for long haul flights, which can be as long as 17 hours, it's really important to get up and take a walk down the aisle to keep your blood circulating through your entire body. When you sit for several hours at a time without moving, blood tends to pool in your feet, ankles, and lower legs. This swelling can be extremely uncomfortable for most, painful for some, and downright dangerous for a few who are at risk of a condition known as deep vein thrombosis. Also referred to as DVT, this condition rears its ugly head when a blood clot, also known as a thrombus, forms in one of the deep veins in your body. The most common place for this to happen is the legs, and symptoms can present themselves as pain or swelling, but sometimes do not appear at all. For people prone to issues with blood clots, it's especially important that they take frequent walks up and down the aisles of the plane. Otherwise, they risk the blood clot getting loose and traveling to hazardous locations, such as the lungs, where they can get stuck and block the blood 
blood flow to these essential organs. Don't be shy to move. Your health is more important. You become oxygen deprived. Have you ever visited a city at a higher altitude than your own home? If yes, you might have found that climbing even just a few stairs can be a taxing endeavor. Something similar happens on a plane. At higher altitudes, the air pressure is lower than it is at sea level, and there is less oxygen available in the air. Airplane cabins are pressurized to about 75% of normal atmospheric pressure, simulating an altitude of around 6,000 to 8,000 feet above sea level. This is approximately equivalent to the atmospheric pressure in Mexico City. If you're on a long-haul flight, this lack of oxygen can actually lead to a condition called hypoxia, characterized by a deficiency of oxygen in parts or all of the body. This can contribute to a number of unpleasant symptoms, such as headache, dizziness, and fatigue. This isn't to say the air isn't safe, it's just that most people aren't used to the lower oxygen levels. Thus, you can start to become very sleepy, not that it's easy to fall asleep on a plane in the first place. Additionally, the most important part of your body can become further oxygen deprived for other reasons. When you're sitting in the same seat for hours on end and not moving much, your blood flow decreases including blood flow to the brain. This leaves your brain further hungry for oxygen, reducing mental sharpness. It's not just the stress of travel causing you to feel bogged down. You get blasted by radiation. Did you know that flying at such high altitude can put you more at risk to the consequences of radiation from the sun? The sun gives off two forms of UV radiation, UVA and UVB. The plane's windows are capable of blocking UVB rays, but the more dangerous UVA rays are still able to make it through. One study found that a seven-hour plane ride can dish out as much radiation as a standard x-ray would. To put that into perspective, flying for one hour at 30,000 feet is approximately equivalent to spending 20 minutes in a tanning bed. Of course, you can always just close the blinds on the window if you happen to have a window seat, something that unfortunately our pilots cannot do. Pilots have been known to have higher incidences of skin cancer, most likely due to regularly sitting for many hours on end at high altitudes with only a window to protect them. If you're a frequent flyer and concerned about exposure to UV radiation, and its unforgiving consequences. Make sure to take the sunscreen with you on your future flights. Optionally, if the thought of applying sunscreen to take a flight doesn't appeal to you, you can also just take a seat further away from the windows. It's important to keep that skin young and healthy. And that's all for what happens to your body on an airplane. We hope you enjoyed our video, and if you did, don't forget to check out 10 Things You Should Never Do on an Airplane for more flying facts.